Okay, this is HRW98P091. We've got uh, two blocks attached by a cord over a frictionless pulley. Um, one end is fixed uh, by, a sp we've got a spring fixed to the wall, and the whole thing is attached to that spring. So we've got the two, we've got the two masses, um, M is just 1.7 and 2M is, is two times that. We've got the spring constant, we, let's see, horizontal surface of friction are, pull, are frictionless, so everything's frictionless, and the pulley has neg negligible mats, so we don't have to worry about um, angular kinetic energy. The blocks are released from rest with the spring relaxed. Okay, so everything started motionless with the spring relaxed. So when we started, all of the energy we had was just the gravitational potential energy of the hanging block. Um, I'm not going to count the gravitational potential energy of the block on the table because that's never going to change. So I'm just going to ignore it. Okie dokie. Um, later, as this gets pulled down, things are going to move. So some of that energy will be changed into kinetic energy. And the spring is going to get stretched. So some of that is going to get um, stored as a spring energy. So first off, what is the combined kinetic energy of the two blocks when the hanging block has fallen a distance of 0 0.09 meters. Okay, well I know first off, if the if everything started from rest when the spring was relaxed, then when this falls 0 0.09 meters, the spring has been sp stretched 0 0.09 meters as well. So, let's go look at some math. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Here we go. Alright, for instance, I know the total energy was the energy in the beginning Let's just say that the block, when it started, was at a height of zero. So let's just say our total energy is zero, okay? This started at a height of zero, so the potential energy in the, for gravity is zero. The spring was not compressed, that's zero. The thing is not moving, so it was zero. Okay, but now, after this has happened, okay, I have fallen 0 0.09 meters, so the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy, plus the kinetic energy, plus the potential energy stored in the spring, all that together has got to still equal to zero. Okie dokie. Well, the potential energy is m, well, it's, the mass of this is, is 2 times big M, times g, times h, h it's fallen, 0 0.09 meters, so that's negative 0 0.09 meters. Negative 0 0.09 meters. Okie dokie. Kinetic energy is what we're looking for. I'm just going to leave that alone. And then the spring energy is um, k over 2 times how far it's been stretched. Well, it's been stretched 0 0.09 meters. Remember what we said, yeah. So if I um, rearrange all this to get k alone, let's see, I've got a negative in this term. So when I put it over there, it becomes positive. So I've got 2mg times 0 0.09. And then I'm going to subtract all of this. That's a lowercase k, by the way. If you haven't watched the other videos, to differentiate spring constant and capital K, which is kinetic energy, I've started trying to make a, it looks like a stupid kindergarten k, sorry. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's going to equal my k. So I just plug all the numbers in. So I've got uh, two times my numbers. M is 1.7, 1.7 g <laughs> minus for me k is 220, 220 over 2. 0.0. That's a curve. 0 0.09. Wow. Come on, pen. Go work with me here. Equals k. Put all that in my calculator, and I get. 2.1078, which rounds to 2.11 joules. And that's what we got, so that's good. All right, what is the kinetic energy of the hanging block? So remember, this was the combined kinetic energy. Now I just want the kinetic energy of the hanging block. Well, if this was the combined kinetic energy, that was the kinetic energy of both blocks. So I just need to subtract away the kinetic energy of the uh, uh, of one of the blocks. So basically, what we're saying here is that that kinetic energy is one half 
times like all of the mass combined, which in this case was m plus 2m, so this was 3, 3m, right? Um, v squared. Uh, better way to say that is the kinetic energy is the kinetic energy of the first block plus the kinetic energy of the second block. So if I solve all this for v, I can find the velocity of everything that was moving. So if I solve that for v, I'm going to get that v is the square root of 2 times the total kinetic energy over the mass. Yeah, which the total mass, which is 3m. Sorry, I should put that. 3m. And we end up with v equals 0 0.909 meters per second. OK. So down here, and I'm sorry, I should have been switching colors this whole time. What's the point of having different colored pens if you don't use them? Sorry. OK. Um, I want just the kinetic energy of the hanging block. So that's going to be the total minus the kinetic energy of the this block up here. So that's the 2.11 minus um, 1 half the mass of the block up here is just m, not 2m or anything, just m, and then times the velocity I just found. So if I plug all this in, I'm going to get the kinetic energy of the hanging block. So 2.11 minus 1 half times 1.7 times v, this v, squared. Put that in the calculator. And I come out with 1.4074, which rounds to 1.41, uh, which is, oops, what did I put that? Is joules, which is what, that's the right answer. OK. What maximum distance does the hanging block fall before momentarily stopping? Alrighty. Well, if it momentarily stops, that means that its kinetic energy is zero. So I'm back to, um, I know that the total energy from how I had it set up, it's going to be zero. Okay, now I need that to equal, well, I need it to equal the gravitational potential energy plus the potential energy in the spring, plus the kinetic energy. But now this thing is momentarily stopping, so this is gone. Basically what I'm saying here is I need um, the gravitational potential energy and the potential energy stored in the spring to add up to zero. Basically, they need to be the same number. They're just good. like one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. Okay. Now, what makes this uh, possible to do is the fact that, well, the, p the potential energy is going to be um, the mass of the block, the hanging block, so mass of the hanging block times gravity times the height that it falls, and then the spring constant is, or sorry, the kinetic energy is, oh, wow, blah, 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 blah. I need to drink some more tea. Um, yeah, T. <laughs> um, the potential energy stored in the spring is going to be the spring constant over 2 times how far it gets stretched. But remember how we said the distance the spring gets stretched is just how far this has fallen. So that's going to be H again, squared. So H is what I'm searching for, right? So H is what I'm going to solve for. So right away, um, h equals 0 is a valid solution for this problem. But that was the beginning of the problem. When this hadn't fallen any, then the potential energy was equal to the potential on the spring, they are both 0. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by h, just to get rid of it, that solution. So now I've got 0 equals 2mg plus spring constant over 2 just times h. Solve that for h, so move this to the other side. And multiply by 2 and divide by k, and we get negative uh, 4 mg over the spring constant is going to give me my h. Okay, So just plug all that stuff in. Do, 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 do. 
And I get that h. Now I am going to get a negative number here because I'm solving for h as it has fallen. But they want to know what distance it falls. You're going to take the negative off of there. So I uh, put that on my calculator and I get um, 0.3029, which rounds off to 0.303 meters, which is the answer that I have on my key. So we're good.